they've been using R32 in mini splits yeah. in Asia and in other parts of the world. It's just coming to the US. This yeah. is all has been in use for a long time, right? Yes. Uh, we're here to talk a little bit today about refrigerant changes. So that's all the, uh, the latest news in the HVAC industry is the oncoming of A2Ls. And so Mike's here to uh, be our resident expert today and uh, to kind of try and help demystify what does this actually mean for us? So can you start by just telling us what's A2L even mean? What are they talking about? So A2L is actually an acronym for um, A is meaning it's non-toxic, 2 means it's flammable, and L means it's low burning velocity. Um, all that is is just a bunch of numbers and letters that classify it with uh, the EPA. Um, gives you an idea of what it is as far as if it's toxic or not, flammable or not, um, and what the velocity of the burning is. Um, it, you do end up having that flammability factor, which it's not exactly as flammable as people think it is. Um, you're not going to hold your torch up next to it and it's going to go up in flames. Um, they've actually done a lot of testing on it. Um, they used hair dryers, lighters, torches to see what the combustibility of the A2L refrigerant is. Mm -hmm. It takes a large quantity to get some sort of explosion. So as far as being really flammable and worrying about safety is not really that bad. Um, that's why they take safety precautions. They sit there and they put the refrigerant sensors on the units. So the refrigerant sensors are testing whether there's a leak in the unit? Yes. And is it, are they gonna require refrigerant sensors like in the conditioned space? Yep, so it's going to be on the unit and they do require it in the conditioned space as well. It does take samples of the air of the parts per million. Okay. Um, and then it goes a percentage of what the... Uh, lower explosive limit or yeah, something like that. Yeah, lower explosive limit. Now, I, I thought I understood that in some big spaces with small units, you won't need sensors. Is, are you always going to need sensors? or Any unit that comes with A2L is going to have a factory uh, sensor on it. Okay, on the unit. Yep, you just have to... But not always in the space. Depends on the size of space, right? They do recommend it, though. They oh, okay, okay. And so a A2L's hot, slightly flammable, right? Um, but why are... What, what's pressing this move towards A2L refrigerants? Because it does have a lower global warming potential factor of it, okay. which does make it more friendly for the um, ozone, more friendly for the environment. So prior to A2Ls, we're using our 410A? 410A, there's, I okay. mean, the list is endless. There's a whole bunch, right? There's a whole bunch. So, so let's talk about what's that actually going to mean for somebody who's buying equipment, right? So you change out the refrigerant, obviously they're gonna have to kind of change the size of the coils and the compressor, compression ratios, things of that nature, right? But um, How's the head pressure compare from 410A to uh, 454B or R32? So 454B has about the same operating pressures as 410A. They are very, very close. R32 is a tend a little bit lower, but it's still within a good range of 410A. So if you're familiar with 410A, it's going to be right around there. So we're not talking significantly different methods of construction. The equipment's going to look pretty much the same and act pretty much the same, except it's going to have that added sensor. Yep. Talk about tools. Will I need new tools? Yep. So tools such as your recovery machine, um, your vacuum pump are going to have to be spark free. So when you do get it, it ends up being like brushless motors and stuff that aren't able to create a spark there. Just added safety there. Yep. Added safety. Okay. So as far as the systems themselves, do we have some feeling for like, for how much of a cost delta there's going to be? It's about a 15 to 25% increase. Although it is, yes, an increase, you are seeing a potential savings over time given uh, it does take lower capacities to fill. What, what do you mean by lower capacities to fill? Does that less refrigerant per ton or something? Yes. So okay. you don't have to use as much of it 
let's say a five ton unit, it's going to take less refrigerant and a A2L than it does a 410A. Okay. And you get the same capacity. Okay, cool. So if I have a unit that quits in the next three months, um, you know, can I get R32 already? Should I go ahead and switch to R32? Or should I still go look for that 410A unit because that's kind of known technology? I mean, if the average life of that unit is 13 to 15 years, do I want to be in the old refrigerant 15 years from now? Uh, so is there enough information right now for us to, to make a recommendation? Should people be proactively looking for the new stuff or so, sticking with the 410A? So it's offered as of right now. Um, units are already rolling out. I would say it kind of depends on your preference. If you feel more comfortable knowing 410A, the issue is, is you're going to start seeing that production problem. 410A, the government is going to do their part to continue to ratchet down production limits so that it gets expensive on purpose, right? Yes. Just like they did with R22. So I'm saving 20% up front potentially with a 410A unit today, but if it needs recharged anytime in the next 15 years, I'm going to pay through the nose for that. Yes. So it's kind of so pay now, pay later. Yep. What if I have an R410A system? Can I switch it over to an A2L? So you do have to upgrade your system. Line sets, pretty much you can use the same line sets. You just have to flush them out. But as far as equipment, you do have to have new equipment. Okay. Uh, just has to do with, again, the new compressors are spark free. So the internals aren't gonna create a spark and it's gonna be able to hold those pressures. and refrigerant property it takes a different txv it takes a different gotcha. coil that makes compressor sense. and all that so now if i have a 410a system am i just out of luck that because this goes into effect january 1 right yes january 1st 2025 so january can i still get a charge for my 410a system yes okay you still can get it it just eventually over the next 10 years you will start to see it drift off like uh, r22 is where um, R22 nowadays, it's kind of hard to get a R22 compressor, R22 coil without paying five, ten times more than it would have been a um, couple years ago. So we're going to see that happen. Although new units is where you're going to start seeing the changes January 1st. New units won't have 410A. It'll be the R32 and R454B. Okay. So they can't even sell new equipment that takes 410A after January 1. So on the uh, RTUs, as we call it, you have till 2027 to sell it. Okay. Um, split systems, you have till 2025, which is next year, and VRFs is 2026 okay. to sell them out. But they will not be manufacturing them after January uh, 1st. It'll all be just what is What's been already manufactured story? before, let's just say December 31st, 2024. Okay. Um, but so we still expect there to be an aftermarket to continue to service the installed base. Yep. It's just Nobody needs to panic and like go <laughs> rip everything out that they have. No. Maintenance wise, you know, if you've got this system installed or you're going to get a new, uh, a new A2L system put in, is there anything I need to do different as a, a commercial user or a homeowner? I'm going out and cleaning coils. Does any of that get any different? On the exterior, no. It's all going to be refrigerant-wise. The difference that people are going to see is just that extra refrigerant sensor. Um, that's about the only difference you're going to see uh, wise on it. Um, otherwise, everything on the exterior, you're still going to clean it the same way. Uh, you're still going to... It's still going to look like a same old rooftop or a same old split system. Uh, so, so currently, ASHRAE says a rooftop unit should last somewhere what, 15 years in that range? 13 to 15. 13 to 15 average. is average for ASHRAE. Uh, that's what they say. It, it So average meaning if you take really good care of it, you might get 20, 25 years out of a piece of equipment. And if you do nothing, you might get five, right? Yes. So knowing that uh, and that there's a price increase coming, what kinds of things could people do to make that 410A system last a little longer so that they don't have to... Um, Take this big price increase next year so the critical things i would say would be cleaning coils um, that's a definitely big one dirty condenser coils are actually the number one compressor killer you're restricting that airflow 
not only are you restricting airflow, airflow and affecting that heat transfer process off the coil, it also acts as a breathing mechanism for that compressor. Um, so if you're not dissipating heat off that coil, you're not rejecting enough heat. So you got that heat coming back. So, so then that drives head pressure. So that right? drives head pressure. So then I'm using way more electricity and I'm wearing out the compressor and overheating things because there's no airflow. Yep. So cleaning the coils, that's the biggest thing. Biggest thing. Um, is there any others? Are there alignments or belts or what else would you be looking at there? So if you have a rough top that does have belt driven, um, definitely belts affect as well. So if you got a loose belt, you're not going to get the proper airflow. You got too tight of a belt, it's going to break off. You're not going to have airflow either. Uh, make sure your coils are clean. Check your refrigerant charge. Make sure we got no leaks. Again, leaks can also create another snowball effect. Where again, not much refrigerant, too much stress on the compressor, too high of amps on the compressor. Now we're back to the compressor possibly going out. So again, preventative maintenance definitely helps take some of that burden of these little things that could mean nothing at first until over time you right. start adding up your costly effects, which could end up being a new compressor. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been RAS Class. If you have any questions or comments or we said something you disagree with, leave it in the comments or send us an email at sales at rasmac.com.